Okay, um, welcome to my talk. Uh, I'm Philip. I'm a Unix nerd for roughly 25 or something years now. Uh, for three or four years, I was obviously a developer in the domain of PF as well, but uh, time was always an issue. In 2000, I co founded SysPy and created Cloud Linux before Cloud even existed. And my domain uh, these days is especially unattended on my installing, uh, drawing anything uh, over any problem, especially in terms of uh, physical systems installations, bare metal. Uh, but also, um, <coughs> of course, in the VM arena. So, this is still the screen of the same Is uh, how, how to get a bootable uh, system image in the network for very weird means, like for example, Amazon streaming block wise or their EBS systems directly into the. Oops. These common denominators probably just for all these files and the um, VM uh, code will just pick up the boot sector and, and bring the whole, whole stuff up. Um, what I tackle uh, especially is I want to have infrastructure to grow, as I name it, which means uh, all the stuff we are doing physically in the data center or whatever I want to have on my laptop itself to simulate all the um, auto provisioning process. Uh, and that should uh, even work if I'm sitting in a plane or in a data center with a good Faraday cage style of, of protection. Um, and that helps me to have reproducible provisioning scripting and all that. And for that reason, I need to have a tool um, that can do that on different host systems, like I have an always X laptop here, but the target system might be Xenter or KVM or in our case of VC VMN now and along there the virtualizer changes as well. On my laptop it's virtual box and on OPC it's VMN now or just uh, MI and much more. So the tool chosen is Packer. Oh and why Packer is for the next slide, but um, when I was uh, looking for uh, installation solutions or whatever, I found that more or less everybody is writing his own installing framework, shell scripts, or whatever. Uh, or they use something from GitHub or other stuff from the internet, the, the famous uh, code something shell script pipe bash, <coughs> which is, well, I don't need to tell you. Uh, or you really have a provisioning guy, and when that one is on holidays or so, no new images are available. <coughs> so I uh, ended up with Packer, and it was last year's European Speedcon when Antoine approached me about, hey, there's Packer, I know I'm using it, uh, it should also work on OpenSD, which the Packer uh, software itself already does, but it needs a bit fiddling work around um, to use uh, VMM. And he asked me if I would look into it uh, to have a real native support uh, for VMM. And I was, who was last year here uh, listening to my background talk? 
Oh, this song. Uh, same problem here. And I was thinking, oh, I was already tackling uh, uh, HashiCorp software, okay, more Ruby, just to find out that that was written in Go. Uh, and I didn't know any Go, only you. Uh, but that was a nice uh, opportunity to uh, learn Go. Maybe this is slow. Um, <clears throat> and started to, to tackle it. And uh, Packer itself has the real big advantage that you have a single configuration. The, all the image building will be also in parallel, so you maybe want to create an AMI image, something for Google Cloud Engine, for your virtual box, all that. And it will run uh, all those build parts in parallel, um, which gives a nice speed because uh, if your uplink, for example, Amazon is very slow, and you're doing that serialized, um, well, that today might be over. Um, it's not a config management or provisioning tool by itself. It will just reach out if you want to, to uh, add third-party software and all that. Uh, well, you know, in like just this thing or pop the chat as a little name, whatever you want. I have a full list of supported ones uh, on the next or second next page. Like that, when we go down, um, the Packer core itself is just an RPC server, so to say. And all the builder and the, the other uh, components are so called plugins. And the core, uh, the dis distributed Packer software is just one binary. So, um, obviously, if you look at the uh, plist of, uh, of the package, it's just one entry. Use an open link packer. That's it. Uh, and the configuration is basically one or maybe a second JSON file with variables you could use in the um, JSON template afterwards. So it's a pretty uh, easy setup for the core component. Terminology from Packer, so you have artifacts, that's the actual outcome um, which you will uh, use later on. Um, for example, with virtual box or VMM, uh, it's such a just draw uh, this files or your uh, ID and all that. Um, builds are exactly that running task to create uh, those artifacts, and that's using uh, the whole builder, which will interact with the uh, uh, in our case, maybe with, with uh, VMCTL and all that, to create um, the architect. And you have optional provisioners, like I already said, where you can, um, just after the installation itself has finished, you can just uh, run more package add or your uh, shared recipe or log ansible and all that. And then there are post processors which care to Take those artifacts, like in virtual box, the disk image in the metadata.json and power that up into a dot box by the way, and uh, can uh, use it directly. And templates <laughs> are not VM templates like in some other uh, project, but it's just a JSON configuration defining the uh, builders, provisions, post processes, and all that below. <clears throat> so I said there are a lot of builders, uh, that's the full list. I just found out open metal is missing for whatever reason, but um, like I did, you can just um, write your own plugin to support your uh, 
much of an answer on tissue work. Um, but the list is pretty complete, I think. Anyone having a virtualized environment that's not listed here? I don't think so. And um, <clears throat> and if you write, write your own plugin, it, uh, you cannot really link it to the um, main uh, single binary, but you have to put your single go binary either in uh, uh, home, home directory in packet.d plugins or in the directory uh, where the packet binary is. So, there would be a package the other day, it would land in user local link. And for uh, provisioning within Packer, you can use that. So the, the big players are all in there. Uh, and with a shared path and solve, or just inline shell, or even if you have a bigger shell environment, I mean, there are shell enthusiasts here. Um, you can um, uh, have your shell script and then it is uploaded into the environment and execute it. So, on the OpenBSD side, I'm probably most of you know those components for VMM, but I'm just having that here for common um, to cover it all, uh, especially in case uh, how the uh, my little plugin is uh, interacting here with OpenBSD components. So we remember inside we need a uh, steering uh, daemon for the VMs and we have CTL to interact uh, on the system side with VMD and the uh, packer plugin is more or less calling out to VM CTL to have VM CTL to create uh, the uh, intended VMs. VM con um, would be for network configurations or uh, that. In terms of the plugin, I have no use for that right now, but that might come the other day. And then there's Lewis, because um, you can and should run Packer itself as just your regular user or maybe a build user. But uh, for example, VMD, uh, you need to run as root. And so there is inline <coughs> handling of US. But for some reasons, uh, I cannot interact with the user TTY. So you could type in your password. So you need uh, no pass in your US.conf. Uh, persist is typically um, time outing too fast. It's only five minutes. And if you <coughs> complex uh, installation or over a uh, low bandwidth uh, line on um, those five minutes uh, won't do it. And we are also not getting an error message at that point. We have to figure it out the other day, but just if you're trying it, um, have that in mind that your user into his uh, is no pass. Additional uh, configuration you will need. Um and, and SysCTL for the for the map to work. Um, <laughs> that's only needed if you need to reach out to the internet like you're doing an HTTP based install from either CDN OpenBSD or or uh, your own local whatever. If you do a CD based um, installation, which I will show in the demo. Um, then you could skip that part. <coughs> right, so before more details are coming up, any questions so far? That get to con fly. Say? That the get to the last slide. That's settings that go on the host machine that you're using? That's on the host machine. This network is what yeah. VMM is providing on the host side to have a network link into the VM. And uh, those are unrooted, so you need to map to, to well, whatever is usable. Yeah. Um, and that's just an employee of the main server. 
And of course, you have to start with a variable, and that probably uh, uses the plugin itself that can detect is the VM running or not, and will fire it up if not. Something else? What about? <coughs> So to write a Paco um, plugin, um, obviously you need Go. Um, Paco itself as the, the main core component and Git, um, or if you want to work on my plugin, you need Git because it's on GitHub. Uh, if you're doing your own thing with CVS, Mercurial, Sabrina, and all that, you need that. Uh, some some survivors of editor wars, <laughs> and the dependencies right now um, for this plugin is around uh, one point four gigabyte, and you will whatever you are doing, you will need to have that disk space available as well. Um, if you get load my repo, you will get that directory layout, <coughs> and that's. The layout of most of the plugins as well. Some are, let's say, upside down. When I have main Go in a sub subdirectory and the, all the main uh, working Go files in, in the main directory, matter of taste, I would say. Whether you know, Jake, there's any special reason why they are doing that. And in detail, I have a little main file just to keep things simple, build, install, set declarative. VMB is uh, just building a VM with debugging output, uh, go formatting. Uh, Wrecking is about um, uh, resolving the dependency tree, uh, testing clean and uninstall set declarative as well. So uh, our entry point for the plugin is uh, main.go and it will import, initialize, and register this uh, server plugin with the uh, uh, Packer core. So it knows there is something out there called a uh, Packer Builder of this DBMM. And if you trigger that by the configuration, then it will know, oh, I have to talk to that guy. And that's uh, all going over uh, Go RPC. Uh, <coughs> and then the server goes into, I call it demonized mode. <coughs> so it's just sitting there waiting for the core to, to trigger him, hey, please do something. <coughs> then in the work server, there's config.go, uh, which is more or less only the complete description uh, of the configuration struct where all your new configuration and some implied configuration uh, is defined and how it is accessible in terms of substructs and uh, which types and all that. And since that's a big bigger, um, I have put that in our in own file, but you could do it in <coughs> many other drive go as well. Uh, Build go uh, will Pop up the so called driver, and um, then read additional configuration that's uh, like gap con uh, configuration, like what's the current setup of the machine of the <coughs> um, And then the run part of the plugin will, uh, I call it tokenizing all the build steps into so called steps. So that's like, uh, I have the details on the next page. And when the build has finished, uh, it will populate a uh, data structure I could use from a post processor, for example. So I know which artifacts are there and where are they, and all that. So the, as this, since all is paralyzed, um, the post processor could be running five minutes later or something, and that's more or less the, uh, let's say, temp storage of configuration information. Driver Go is where the fun, funny part is in terms of interacting with the actual virtualizer. Like, um, 
please create me a disk, start this VM, stop the VM, do, do whatever. Um, currently, uh, I have an undone uh, function in there. Um, exactly, to, exa uh, exactly to be able to reach out from that temporary VM into uh, the internet or networking uh, in general, I need to know which IP address I have so to say on the outside, the cap interface of the host. And I'm, the code is just yet missing to uh, pass uh, I have config or whatever and to have it out. So currently it will just return. Uh, 100.64.1.2 uh, because that's <coughs> always true or correct for a VM with the ID 1. And I was talking to some people, actually, it should be possible even for VM CTL as the official uh, administrative tool for that, uh, that I can query VMD and the kernel, hey, what's the configuration? Because right now, configuration in username can only be seen by I have config and that's just tedious. It's okay for a human because you get a description line uh, which VM this belongs to. Um, but from an automation perspective, that's not ideal. Um, then there's uh, actual steps for doing that. So we will create a by depending on the configuration or uh, output directory for, for the artifacts. And then just uh, uh, again like uh, VMCTL um, to do the uh, what is it, create or create a HD? Uh, create a disk in either raw or UCAL2. Uh, and then run up um, a VM. Uh, again, based on the configuration, you will see that later on, like uh, how much memory, uh, which kernel, will it be slash BSD, RD, or somewhere you have to, somewhere else. And right now, I have a bit of a problem with, between the debugging error handling and actually successful builds. Uh, how to deal with uh, the VM hanging around or exiting too early or error exiting, and that needs a bit more. Uh, Arrow handling. <clears throat> so you might end up with a broken packer build and the VM is still running. Um, and then you have to shut down that first because otherwise uh, the VM will get ID2. And then the network stuff, uh, as I said, with the fixed return will not work anymore. So two fixes uh, that should come up pretty soon. And then uh, that's not an issue anymore. <clears throat> Boot command is the, the most interesting part, probably. Uh, Packer uh, can be told while the build is running, please bring up an HTTP server. And um, this will bind to a more or less random port. And I have to gather which port is that and pass it on to. Uh, the actual boot command. Uh, we will see that in the demo how that looks like and why this is really useful. Um, this built in HTTP cannot run or shouldn't run on port 80. Um, so the current way auto install um, tries to retrieve um, install.com um, cannot work. So you have to more or less. Um, have a, a fixed URL, but uh, the IP in the uh, port uh, is a variable you can use in the uh, JSON file. Um, I will have to look into it uh, at this uh, way that Autoinstall tries to <coughs> uh, retrieve hostname install.conf or update.conf uh, or MAC address, and then the fallback here is that. Hacker, the drive, uh, the set boot command will more or less type in this information. So, this is everything. 
needed uh, in regards to uh, an ISO-based installation with some configuration about how much memory and all that. And uh, what I was just talking about is exactly that. So dot uh, ip and port is a uh, packer internal variable. My plugin has to uh, uh, get values into it. And um, then you just say uh, which configuration file you want. And this configuration files uh, will be looked for in this document root, whatever you define it. So that's really a local, local installation. It's not reaching out to uh, whatever remote thing. So you can have all in one place. Um, with an ISO-based installation, the, the way the uh, thing right now works is that uh, it will call VMCDL with a dash R. So that will be attached to the VM as a CD0. And then you can just choose uh, uh, installation uh, set source is uh, CD0 and off you go. So, and I'm not so good with the demo bots. Well, I have this there. So, uh, I have it online, but also in the um, uh, GitHub repo, I have the Eskimo cast file, so I can do that offline as well, but I will try the online version. Serial consoles are not meant to be to be connected twice, and so the step boot command will attach to the serial console as a TTY, and if you are trying to debug your your plugin or your uh, auto install comp setup, and you just just think, oh, well, we only will connect one, you will get a completely garbled output. And you cannot fix it. I was trying like speed settings and whatever. What's wrong? Because the garbling looks just like one speed settings. But Mike told me there's no way you can do it. So I more or less uh, capture the TTY input and output and then writing that into this log file. That's the <laughs> name of your of your build and then just don't lock. That's why I'm taming this because the way you ask is anymore, I can come come from a second calendar, so that's why this is uh, just for it. So that's the call, just pack the build with your table and we create an image and then boot up the VM and this is just the serial console output as it starts. Um, and here's no boot because I'm, we're booting directly into BSD.rd. Uh, but it's uh, attached at the very moment the VM is coming up. So uh, it tries to do all those automatic fetching of the install of conf, but you cannot find it, so it will fall back and asking you. And uh, the plugin is just typing in the, the URL, and here with the dynamically generated port, and then just running down um, on the information that's in there. That's just a good, obviously, auto install. Uh, one thing, if you're wondering, um, 
it's not stored um, the way this TTY catch, uh, so to say, works. Is uh, it's based on the line feed here, so you cannot see like install in base uh, six five uh, PG set, and then you have your progress meter. Uh, it will just sit here, and you won't see uh, before it has completed one hundred percent. So that's just annoying, enough, but it's good enough for debugging. I mean, probably it's called unattended install for a reason. <laughs> Well, this, oh, we're done already. <clears throat> Questions in between while this is running? No, I don't think that. When Bill connects to the serial port. Say? When, sorry, when Packer connects to the serial port, does Packer have enough intelligence to figure out the device name itself that it needs to connect to? Or is it using a helper script or what? It's just um, if you are starting VMCDL with minus C, you're getting a direct return of that file script and I'm just hooking up with that. I, and I'm not going to the device name or whatever. I'm just grabbing um, the TTY as it comes. Mm. <laughs> Does name it by the high quality the negatives to create, create, create the information in and out of the DB? I know mean, the packet doesn't support that, but the DB provide a function like that? Um, yeah, that was so. Uh, what I was uh, talking about with uh, the problem with uh, I would have to pass I have confidence instead of just asking DB. Mm -hmm. um, it really depends on the virtualizer. For example, the virtual box, you can have a VBox manage and then dumping in machine. Readable format, everything you know about that thing, but that's not here yet. So. Yeah, congrats for a boring installation with a whole like four. <laughs> um, rebooting is uh, actually misleading because uh, the installer, well, it triggers a reboot and it will shut down the VM. And, well, it, tries to reboot by a power cycle, but the VM has no clue of power cycle. And VMD wouldn't spin up the, the, the VM just, just again because uh, all the information around it, like uh, which kernel and so on, is gone at that moment. So it cannot re spin. And for now, I have that in the fixed means. I'm just on the other side of the game. Um, ah, I cannot scroll there. <laughs> Um, it, right now, it has a static timeout of 240 seconds, and this one is a bit easy, uh, faster. Um, so apparently, Packer is just <laughs> sitting there for in total 240 seconds, and then it will uh, continue. Uh, so I take it by the fact that it's waiting that long, that's not configured. Um, no, it's, it's just, it has to be done, like, uh, okay, now we are here for a second, and we go for the question. Um, I just have to add some driver function, which will just pull the MCTL, and the moment the VM is gone, I can just go on instead of a timeout. So I won't configure a timeout, but I will just pull the MCTL when the VM is gone, put it here. Oh, okay, I'm good. Gotcha. Okay. So it says uh, I have an artifact where I'm going to be using uh, images. Oops. Where's the uh, one part key? Whatever file, uh, no, just proving the point. Um, just with uh, the network pane and the local top and the connected console and this image file. Uh, now you can see it's just booting up that very nicely. Um, 
So you see RC crash time, there's a real crash boot after the install. So you're not losing that possibility for chicken egg problems. <coughs> And I can log in with the uh, user information from the JSON file. Actually, from the install card. And uh, well, it works, it has internet. And that's about the demo. Further questions? Everybody, please go. So, well, I, so this is great. Yep. <laughs> I could say, I want to find the end to spin out. So is it possible to say, don't spin at one VM, like spin at five? Yeah. You, you wouldn't want to hack or word. You wouldn't use hack to spin them up locally and keep them running. Like, you want hacker to grab the disk image and then spin up five VMs manually with that. So OK, so this is only to create the image. And then once you create the if you If you want five different images, for example, with different uh, install column settings, you are just this object in Tracer. You are just repeating that with uh, different names and different configurations. And then we'll rush out and try five in parallel. <laughs> just not yet, because of the networking thing. But uh, by the sign of Packer, yes, you could do that. If you need five running VMs from the same image to copy it around, of course. Actually, that's a task for um, the, um, for the post-processor, grab that image, add in the virtual box uh, row, add metadata.json and whatever, and then call all of the box files. And you can have multiple of those, for example. So, Possibilities are way great here with Packer. So, current kind of status of, this, of, of the project is around the VMM side, everything is fine. Besides that thing about, I would like to have VMD reporting that configuration stuff, but well, that's not punishing maybe. Um, the plugin itself is. From, from the steps and the architecture are more or less complete. And uh, I have all the part about creating a, uh, a disk with other auto-install auto infrastructure, uh, let's say the packet um, building web server to provide uh, the install of config download. But there's stuff to do to fix. The one thing is get the tab IP address. Is your pulling request ready? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, but what was ready uh, just uh, for lunch is QCAR2 support. So in the JSON uh, before it was uh, this format is raw, uh, but since uh, two hours or something, thanks to Jay, uh, you can use QCAR2 as well. And that's what I was just saying about the timeout. Observe the VM. If it's gone, the whole thing has finished and then just advance because the timeout would be bad always, like faster disk, slower disk, faster network, or uh, just adding a uh, package at uh, what has an insane dependency tree for a server at least. Maybe, I don't know, pack maker and that's pulling in too many <coughs> other packages and suddenly your timeout is bad again or too slow, uh, too, too low. So observe it and uh, proceed with the following tasks uh, just afterwards. I was talking about that, so if VMD isn't running, a uh, packer will just fade around and you will not really have a clue why. Uh, and I want to have some checks where it at least it means a warning at VMD missing. That is an error. It will error out anyway. But if your platform doesn't have um, those natural rules, that could be still in, in, intentional. Make it a package. Uh, that should be more or less a, a, a no brainer for any seasoned package builder or both uh, author. Um, I want to have more. Um, 
information I can gather from the driver to be used in either uh, in server front or in the uh, JSON file. Uh, one feature of uh, auto install is you can uh, use a, a display the template to have a different uh, display layout for the, uh, for the mount points. Uh, that's completely missing and not needed for, let's say, simple VMs. Uh, just on top, of, on top of that is multiple disks. And then the thing about having more than one uh, NIC in a VM and configure that and all that. And whatever is coming up, for example, a VMD config dump possibility. And then um, for next year, the, the, all, taking all those building blocks and the information how to um, make this something like a puppet out at your fingertips. I need to finish my record project in terms of creating a record binary, which is still between a mystery and a disaster. <laughs> uh, this resizing, maybe it would would not even have to happening because GrowFS isn't the, the problem, but recalculating display the offsets is painful and if you get it wrong, the thing is so corrupt you uh, cannot repair anything. And um, for those who know cores or something, or, or Optimibla, cloud init and context that if you spin up the VMs in a bigger cloud, uh, environment um, where you have further auto configuration of the VM before it is completely coming up. So that's outlook next year, whatever. Can I ask a quick question about the integration of Vapor? Is the question just making the package, or is the question making the package know about VMM because it knows about other providers to put on? Um, just uh, look at my talk from last year, VSD can. Oh, so the whole background on OpenBSD using VMM is all finished. The problem is I'm still using it with bundle exec, it's repo. Uh, but having uh, this uh, background Ruby, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> turn it into a runnable binary that's doing that what you get when you just uh, uh, for example uh, on Linux RPM install Dragon, you get a new binary that's doing the right thing. And the process from your um, Ruby built environment to creating a binary distribution isn't open source. Mitchell is holding hands on that for well reasons <laughs> I'm not going into. Uh, there are several projects that are dealing with that problem, but uh, like I said, between mystery and disaster and all that, and so um, this one ha had to come up first because having images ready is was a bit made up, uh, more important than background as a package and uh, as a binary distribution. Okay. How does this compare to? Like EMD and creating a, a file directory device and then UFSing that and unpacking the tiles into it. It's a small thing, of course, you do more stuff with it, but the other way would be um, much less going. I have missed one thing here. Oh, oh no, it's exactly here. Um, this one. Uh, we have been trying and playing around with uh, booting the VM with uh, a pixie enabled virus, C virus, uh, but that's always broken in different ways. My marketing is getting mad over it in the meantime. And uh, how about if we could use or, or change the install script itself that I can say, hey, you have been booted from disk but please assume it was a net boot, and then it will start uh, the comparison. It will go to DHCPD, uh, try to download the install and all that. Um, 
this was where, where this is coming from. <coughs> and yes, Packer is one way, and you can do it a lot of different other ways. Um, and if you don't need that um, feature or um, uh, possibilities about paralyzed running and, and all, uh, all good. Uh, a lot of people know Packer, but they don't know your script environment or whatever. So, yeah, sure, you don't need that. But uh, the development of this thing had some outcome that will help other people who are running shell script. So, that's really. <laughs> Um, yeah, code and slides are, are up here. I started it effectively at Hack for Clarus, where I'm moving two weeks. <coughs> uh, again, finishing up that stuff. It's just perfect to have a weekend, another hackathon weekend to um, publish the rough edges I have right now, especially the networking thing. Uh, how do you, do you say Gubernaut or Brabernaut? <laughs> Uh, he was adding uh, the, the module handling um, because I didn't use, uh, know that uh, so far. Uh, isolation and QCAR support and some more funky little things. And of course, if someone else wants to work on, for example, multi disk or disk drive support, more than welcome. Uh, any more questions? We are, I think, way ahead of time. Oh, not that bad. So, this QR code is just that URL. And I'm here tonight at the uh, closing session, of course, in the auction. Please, everybody come in, giving money for the charity. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a backup slide about ghost stuff, but. Maybe not. Uh, questions? Peter? Yeah, well, uh, I was just trying to make my uh, DMC files, but uh, I didn't recognize the DMC. Uh, it's too old, but uh, I didn't recognize the DMC. Oh, yeah, right. Let me go uh, back so to. Previous one, the DMC file is in Yeah. yeah. Um, hang on. Just. Okay, um, before uh, this uh, flag was added, um, if you start um, from slash BSD RD as a <coughs> device, uh, it will not even consider automatic install refund as to start and all that. And if you call it with minus capital B net, then it will exactly insert this part of there is a pixie oh, so. Mac address. It was not pixie e booted. <coughs> it's fading there. Okay, yeah. And then the installer will notice, oh, there was a pixie boot, so I met boot and will run a slightly different profile. Okay. Yeah. Okay. More questions? Who thinks that this is cool? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, by the way, don't forget about the uh, handbar feedback stuff on the BSD hand website. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.